folks. Welcome to another episode of Missouri Homestead Transitions. Welcome to my two-part series of insulating the cabin underneath the floor and stuff. Um, I have a major problem with condensation buildup, especially when it's cold outside, where the floors just water appears, puddles, and we're talking puddles, and it's like not good for the cabin so I am going to work on putting insulation on the bottom and that and I'm, I also ordered a expensive insulated skirting to go around the cabin too and gosh knows when that's going to be here but anyways I went out to homes I, I went out yesterday to Home Depot and I got some of this here. It's real windy, so I don't want to take it all out and stuff. And this is going to be my first layer of protection to go on the underneath the bottom. And I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to secure because it's just foam board type stuff. And I got to make sure that it's done in a way where it won't blow off or from any breezes and stuff in the meantime until the skirting gets here but anyways i need to get this out of the wind before i start and i'll just put it in the garage and get it ready from there okay as i get ready to get started i stopped off at the hardware store in gainesville and they helped me find something to work i was going to use washers and screws but they showed me these things right here caps and stuff and they should work really well for what I need to do but right now what I'm getting ready to do let me show you is where each one of these beams are under here I'm gonna make a mark with my sharpie so I know exactly where I can tack in at the wind is playing havoc with my insulation because it's so white and airy I'm going to start with the easiest row here. If there's ever anything really easy. I still want to get my marks. And because it's not completely, since this is wider than four feet, I'm going to have to cut a sliver to put in the inside here. What a pain in the behind. Uh, I'm taking it to the silver side as the top. Let me get a mouthful of these ready. This is going to be a challenge, especially in the breeze. I really need my wife's help, but there's no way she can get up under here and help me.
think this would be the easiest side. Man, that is anything but easy. And this ground was not pleasant. Anyways, I want to show you what I did so far. This. So, like I said, even if it's not completely airtight, Hopefully it reduces a lot of that cold air drastically. But this has got an R factor of 3.5. Wait, 3.85. There was another one that was 3.5. And it was a different material than this. But I picked this one. As you can see, I got the first part of my skirting on tacked up. I need to go and secure more nails into this thing. It's just difficult from my angle. Anyways, then I brought up because there's a variance in the height. And that's how far, once I get it up there, my skirting's gonna be sticking out this far because it's that thick of insulation. They say half inch so this thing can wiggle back and forth. And then that play. Leave a half inch at the end. On the back here, I had these nails, screws, I had to uh, make room for. Uh, it's more still too. And over here, I have the gas line. difficult part for me is this right here and to keep it dry underneath okay guys as you can see I finished tack nailing the skirting up this front was worse because it's so down low I did the same over here you gotta go up higher stuff and these are the strong force wind areas of my cabin it's all done all the way around the cabin now it's all been nailed up so next it's time to move into phase two which would be put the bottom baseboard down plumb it up and then put the track the upper track on top of that so you get to look forward to seeing that here real soon